today at the National Gallery of Jamaica with Anil Lawrence, assistant curator. He's going to be giving us a tour of the wonderful pieces of art here. Let's get started. All right. Now, on this floor, this is where we have our museum portion. The National Gallery is essentially divided into two sections. Okay. We use the lower floor for our contemporary and revolving exhibitions, and the upper floor is the museum portion. So what we're displaying here are artworks that are representative of the best of every different type of ah. thing that you see coming out in art in Jamaica. Okay. Right here, we start on this section of the mezzanine with some of the in better known intuitive artists' work. This one by Albert Artwell is the 33 and a half year story of Christ. And in this one painting, he has depicted the entire story of Christ's life. But he's also injected some very personal aspects into it because the artist himself is a Rastafarian. And you'll note that all of the yes. main characters essentially are Rastafari. Right. And you'll also notice that the people who are persecuting Christ are very similar to Red Seam Police. <laughs> so yes. he, has, he has kind of incorporated some aspects of his own experience there. Yeah. We have a few other works by a variety of artists. The interesting thing with intuitive artworks is that there is, what we've noticed, there is quite a bit of distinctness in terms of different styles. Because in each work, you'll never look on two intuitive artists and think that they're the same person because right. they're very distinct. Um, a lot of what they represent in the work is about their spiritual life. So a lot of those who are, of, who are either revivalists, who are, you know, believe in the Rastafarian faith, you see that coming out in their work. Right, right, like right. these works here by Everald Brown, his son Clinton. Oh. And the interesting thing though, there are artists who are intuitive and take on more secular topics. So of course, you know, things like Road Repair, Gaston ah. Tabois, and our lovely city of Kingston here mm -hmm. by Sidney McLaren. You can see he has been very conscientious about labeling everything Orange Street okay, yeah, <laughs> in the yeah, North yeah, Parade yeah. and so on, saying so exactly where he's talking about. But the works that we have here on this level are really speaking to a variety of things. We also, of course, abstraction is not something that is unknown to Jamaican art. You have pioneering works like this by Hope Brooks, which was done in 1975, oh. or pomegranates. Yeah, we have a very. Oh, yes. Yes, I you see, this, you see yes. now. But it, it's in terms of creating an abstract work that is still, in some ways, relatable to you know, the public. Because right. you see, when you look at it, you might not be able to figure out what it is exactly. But you can see how the artist has transformed something that's you know, a familiar yeah. food then, in an interesting Indeed. way. Works here are all done by a very, probably the most well-known Jamaican intuitive artist, Malika Capo Reynolds. And I mentioned, I was speaking to you about intuitive artists before. Tell me exactly what do you mean by intuitive artists? You know, what, what exactly is that? All right, well, intuitive artists, uh, the term is used here in Jamaica to speak to artists who don't have formal academic training. It means artists who haven't been to art school, who haven't necessarily been. Those pieces are by people who. Yes, all those pieces were done by well, artists. That's something, who that's something. Have never, and don't necessarily have a connection with European traditions. So someone may have taught them basic sculpting mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe how to mix paint, but they didn't get a formal. Yes. Academic track on Yeah, that man, kind I understand what you mean. So, Capo is one of those. Capo is one of our most famous. And the interesting thing is, you'll see, I, you'll see in Capo's work how his own spiritual beliefs came out. Because Capo was a revivalist bishop, and a lot of the works focused on either his own faith and the way it, it, it was practiced, but also the people in his community, the people in his congregation. You have a work like this, which is called the Royal Rooster. And it is said to be a self-portrait. Really? <laughs> because Capo was you know, the leader of the, 
you could you, you, you look on the way the church is constituted, you know, you have the head, you know, the roost and then, you know, congregation are the hens. So it's an interesting way in which he saw himself as the leader of the church. And of course, there's also the way that the rooster is used in various ceremonies in revivalism. So it's a combination of all these things in this one interesting piece. We have like a work like this, Bread Seekers, which is really about, you know, life in Jamaica going to market. This is two sets of people, one set coming from the market, another set going to the market. Mm -hmm. You know, you have works about relationships, lovers. Um, this untitled piece here, which is also another, could be seen as another version of a Madonna and Child. Child, yeah. You can see a lot of the archetypes that are set up in terms of Western art are reflective here, despite there being a bit of a gap between the two. So here I'm seeing it says, Art in Jamaica, 1000 to 1900. Well, it's really circa 1000 because yeah, we can't that's be what sure. The little C means. Yes, we mm -hmm. can't be sure about the exact date. <laughs> but what we have in these galleries are really works that are coming from around 1000 AD till around 1900. So and these are all Jamaican stuff. Everything here is Jamaican. All right, everything let's here do it. Is Jamaican. These are actually artifacts that were created by the Taino, who, you know, previously called the Arawaks. This map is from 1671, and I know some people may be wondering why we have necessarily a map here in an art gallery. The interesting thing is that any cartographer, map maker, would have had to have some quite a bit of artistic talent if you look at the details around the map. Oh, they drew create, that, yeah. Everything was done by the same person. Now, yeah. in terms of the shape of Jamaica, keep in mind that this is really about how they didn't have satellites back then, so they couldn't see the exact shapes. A lot of this came from exploration, people sailing around Jamaica, and I think they did a pretty good job. They did a really good job. <laughs> you know, if, really you're, if, job. If, if, you're, if you're seeing it from the sea level. Now, in terms of the parishes, Jamaica has been subdivided in a variety of ways over its history. Now, I'd like to point to this piece over here, which is one of the prizes in our collection. It's a portrait of John Blaygrove. Oh, him. Family also from St. Anne. Um, he, his family owned an estate called Cardiff Hall and this painting though was done by an Italian painter by the name of Pompeo Batoni. Now, Batoni was one of the most expensive painters of his day. Mm -hmm. So in order for young Mr. Blaygrove or Mr. Blaygrove's parents to be more specific, to have afforded this kind of portrait, which is one of the finest examples of portraiture that we have, he had to have been immensely wealthy. All of these were done by George Robertson. Now, if you look very carefully on these, you'll notice that the, the way Jamaica is depicted and the way slavery is depicted, it's quite like idyllic almost. It looks like a vacation. All of this, all, everything looks very easygoing. Everybody is very casual. You don't see any abuse. You know, everybody looks quite happy and pleased with their state in life. Mm -hmm. This is propaganda. What this is, these were all done to support a pro-slavery aesthetic, a pro-slavery ideal. Because the person who commissioned all of these works, of course, owned all the lands that you see here, owned a lot of slaves, and was writing in favor of slavery. So of course, the way that visuals yeah. can support the written word, he had all of these commissioned to support his writing because he was trying to convince people that slaves in Jamaica were happy. This sure. is a tilt top table and what yeah. you're looking at is the side because it can tilt in this direction. So you can use it as an actual table, but here it's displayed almost as art. Mm -hmm. 